People ask, what is dark matter? Allow me to give you an amateur explanation. We see in our environment the things that either emit light or which reflect light. That light, though, comes as a spectrum. There's the blue light, the green light, the yellow light, the red light. There is also light that we know of, which we can't see or can only barely see, which is like the infrared light or the ultraviolet light at the other spectrum. Now, we can think of this light as being coarser and more refined. So, perhaps the ultraviolet light is a, quite a coarse light. We can tell because it is reflected by the atmosphere. Whereas the finer light penetrates the atmosphere. This is our daylight. It comes all the way down to us. This is the light which is reflected by the surface of the earth. So if we are inside of a building and we shut all the windows, it's dark inside. However, uh, infrared light may penetrate certain matter. It may certainly penetrate the surface of the earth. So even when the light source, for instance, the sun is gone, the, the warmth still emits a light. So light is always where matter changes, where energy changes its consistency and as energy breaks down into a different, uh, smaller, more subtle form, light is emitted. Now, radioactivity is not normally classed as a light, but it is in essence uh, an energy which is emitted as part of a process of mass breaking down into smaller particles. So it is a light, it's just we don't see it at all. For instance, x-rays. And x-rays penetrate us, they go through our body. So, unlike visual light, which is reflected by our body, x-rays go straight through. So radioactivity then is filtered out in the core of the Earth much deeper. Actually, we find that granite is uh, fairly radioactive because it filters out a lot of the radioactivity that comes from the atmosphere. And if we look at it this way, we may say that there is no limit to as how fine a light can be. So rather than even thinking of us thinking as light as being its, an, its own entity, we should think of light really just as energy which is visible to us. It's, it's an energy it's of very tiny particles, moving particles, which we can actually perceive. However, there are particles that are so fine that they go straight through us. They go straight through everything that we know and we can measure. If we cannot measure a particle, if we cannot perceive it, with our eyes, if we cannot perceive it with our technical equipment, and this is where the CERN accelerator now comes in, because it is, in, a, in essence, a way of us trying to look much deeper into matter. So we're trying to see tinier, much tinier particles, which we just can't perceive at the moment, because we have nothing to measure it with, to perceive it with. There are particles that are so small, that we just don't detect them. Our scientific instruments don't see them. And it is as though they don't exist. So how do we know that dark matter actually does exist? We know that dark matter exists because when we look up at the stars and we try to calculate the way these stars interact and the way they move, we can see that there is a lot more mass involved in that movement because they move a lot faster than we would predict. We can more or less calculate the mass of every star up there by its size and the amount of light it emits and the kind of light it emits. So that gives us pretty much an idea not just of its size but also the material of which it is made up. Now if we look at these constellations, we look at a, at a galaxy and we look at uh, the stars that are in there and the mass that should, is in there within the stars, that predicts a certain movement, which should be much slower than the movement that we actually see. So if the movement is much faster than what we can perceive, 
then obviously there have to be other energies out there. Energies which manifest themselves in, in particle form, which facilitate a movement. So we need to think of it as matter because it affects the gravitational forces that we can perceive when we look up into the stars. So it has to have a mass. It, it functions like a mass. Now, when we look at light, there are two ways of us that we can look at light. We can either look at light as a wave, meaning that uh, the way it behaves, the way it diffracts into uh, a spectrum of light. So if you take white light, you send it through a prism, you then get uh, the, the rainbow colors. Now this is very easily explained by looking at light as a wave. However, there are instances when it is best to look at light as a particle because it has a mass. This mass can be detected. You can put up a screen and uh, it can actually, you can actually measure um, the mass of, of the light hitting that screen. So light is made of, up of very, 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 very tiny particles. And we probably can assume that these particles are not all the same size. Some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. And depending on how big and how small they are, they can penetrate deeper into the core of our planet. So, dark matter, in essence, is the light that we cannot see or detect. But this light also has a mass. And it is that mass that constitutes the dark matter. So it is dark matter because we can't detect it. But we know it is there from the movement that we see up in the stars.